when the problem isn't the customer. Obligatory on mobile, so excuse bad formatting please. For context, I work for a small software company that runs their products on-site for customers in a specific niche around the world. I'm gonna be vague for obvious reasons, but I'll change jobs soon so I don't mind that much if someone finds out it's me. Characters in this story, yours truly a customer representative, called the customer for readability our head of support another dev this happened earlier today. So, this week I have hotline duty. That means, when our daytime support is done for the day, support calls get redirected to my phone until they take over the next morning, and for the whole weekend. This nice Saturday afternoon, I get a call from a gentleman, the customer, with a bad connection and a thick, but not completely incomprehensible accent, still a bad combination. I barely understand what he's trying to tell me, but he seems miffed about the fact that we already sent two emails, policy in our support contracts is you call to notify support, then you email details if necessary. There is some problem with data not showing up in our system, so I say I'll take a look at the mails and get back to them. I boot up my work laptop and take a look. The emails are basically just a data dump from their business end of a data transfer process. Some more context, our software is highly customized for different customers. I have not dealt with this particular customer before, so I'm not familiar with the inner workings of their particular flavor of our package, but support staff recently added common support cases to each customer's wiki page. I get lucky and one of the described problems seems to be similar to the one currently happening. I connect to their system via VPN and take a look. They seem to dump data in a transfer database table which is then collected by our system and put into our database according to our model. Some datasets are marked as successfully transferred, but do not show up in our system. I restart the transfer service and mark the records as not transferred in the transfer table. The customer checks and yes, now the records are there. I'm not the best with these types of things, so figuring this all out and fixing it took about 2 hours. Over time pay semi well earned. I figure there might have been some network hiccup, but I get a feeling that it's not and this will not be the last I'll be hearing of this. Less than 3 hours later, I get another call. Same issue again. Okay, probably not a hiccup. Customer also tells me that they have lots of data coming through the next day, yes, a Sunday, but the customer is in a country where that's basically the equivalent to our Monday, so we can't just manually adjust until main staff gets back to work the day after that. I call our head of support and ask him whether he has any idea how to solve this. He doesn't, but he knows who has the most knowledge of that customer's code. I call him into my relief, he picks up even though it's a Saturday. We take a look together and it's just weird. Some records are there with fitting IDs, but different data, and we just get more confused as we look through the stuff. How does this stuff get transferred, but not transferred? We come to the conclusion that there are some crossovers between IDs, but since our system is strongly typed, we determine that the records that have been reported by the customer to not be visible despite being marked as transferred, have in fact not been transferred, no data in the database, no trace in the logs, nothing. But what went wrong? Did the customer put in corrupted data? Did our service mark the data wrong? Other devs suggest we get on a team's call with customer, and I'm completely out of my depth by now so I have no objections. They talk for a few minutes, and then it hits my colleague. You see, we have product tip and servers and test servers. But because customers usually don't replicate their environments for our test systems, tests are often done with connections to live external data. You might see where this is going. The same data collection service picking up data in the live system also ran on the test server with the same configuration. And whenever a new record was put in for transfer, whichever of the two hit their refresh first would pick it up. At that point, my colleague apologized profusely to me and told me to get out of the call, he'd handle it, for he was the one who had handled the tests and configurations. Story 2. Awkward support session. For a little while I tried a side gig doing anything I was asked for. The kind of work that if it came through as a ticket in a regular job would be immediately request denied. It never came to much and I didn't have the motivation to work for myself, but after very suddenly losing my job it was much better to say self-employed rather than unemployed for my CV. So I had a few appointments teaching retirees how to use an email client and save address books for their folk band and family, attach photos, that sort of thing. Painfully slow and repetitive, but still satisfying to see these people with long successful careers behind them never needing to use a computer take an interest and delve in. People who would never get into it without some entry-level guidance. The family IT person, I've just realized, that people go to when they can't print off a recipe. But paid. It was a change of pace from usual IT work. Glacial. But it was fruitful for all. And then there was client. Client was an owner of a number of local businesses, successful ones too. Bars and pubs I'd been to a few times myself. 
So we discuss rates and arrange some visits, I wonder what kind of questions I'm going to get from him and hope I'm going to be able to cover them. Could it be some financial or business management app I have no clue about? Do I need to research anything? I ask him if he has anything in particular to look at and he says no, I'll just show you when you get here. Okay. Client becomes the one to teach me that some have money money. So much money they are beyond the cares and anxieties of mortals. They are above the clouds, it is a different world with different rules. So I arrive at his office. I'm led up by a member of staff, asked if I want a coffee or anything, and told client will be with me shortly. They make some kind of friendly, gentle joke about client needing heavy hand holding so he'll be glad to see me. Client is 15 minutes late, while I'm being paid by the hour. Client arrives, makes small talk, lounges about and takes his leisurely time settling down. A good 10 minutes goes by with him chattering away, while I'm being paid by the hour. Client is interested in a new sports car. He wants me to show him how to find a video that compares them. So I Google car 1 greater than plus car 2 greater than plus car 3 greater than comparison and find a YouTube video similar to Top Gear style reviews. So we watch this 25 minutes video. Of cars. Being compared. While I am being paid by the hour. Client. Fantastic. So what did you do to bring that up? Me. I googled car 1 greater than plus car 2 greater than plus car 3 greater than comparison I don't know how else to say it. I'm half expecting him to get annoyed and accuse me of being patronizing. Client. Great, thank you I can almost see him forgetting everything I've just said before my eyes. The staff member's light joke comes back to me. Were they trying to warn me? We make conversation about cars I try to keep up with. I don't drive and have zero interest in them but for a good while I'm like yay cars. While I am being paid by the hour. Me, so is there anything else you'd like to look at today? Client, yes, can we look at my emails? Me, of course some actual IT work, what's wrong with them? Client, I've got so many of them and so he has. 8,000 plus unread emails. So we start to go through them. 1. Bye. 1. While I am being paid by the hour. I believe this is a common IT person trait. Depending on the material, we do not read. We skim. There's only so many articles written by Microsoft MVPs rushing to be in the first 100 to publish a thousand word post, describing where TF have they moved it to this time? For people trying to figure out how to achieve the most basic task in the latest version of Windows, before we learn to skip the first three paragraphs. We train our eyes to ignore the hi my name is no one cares, I've been in in the business for no one cares years, here is a list of my no one cares qualifications. In this article we will. And go straight for the first mention of anything relevant. My eyes will drop to the lower third of the screen and start scrolling for actions. As so, blah blah waffle waffle blah blah, navigate to. This is how I function. This is how I need to operate. This is how I stay sane. Every deity help me. Client is going to read each and every email. One by one, word by word. While I am being paid by the hour. And he does. Not being an IT person he reads every single word, slowly. He sat right next to me and asking for my help sorting them. So the implicit agreement is I'm privy to the content and I'm reading them too. And whether I want to or not I speed read through each in the blink of an eye getting the gist and wait for him to catch up. We can't even skip some that look like spam. My instinct is to delete and ignore the many new business opportunity. Emails but the first one we come to he says he's been waiting for it. And it is legit, it's a genuine follow-up to an inquiry. And so we continue, mail by mail. While I am being paid by the hour. And this is how I come to learn client uses his business email address for personal use also. He opens his next email and in the time it takes for lightning to strike I have read an extremely personal, emotionally graphic post-breakup message from his ex. I wait counting the seconds for the thunderclap to follow, ready to apologize and make a hurried, hopefully still paid, exit. Client reads the entire email in silence. Client moves on to the next. And the next. Client, you know it's really hard finding what I want through all this, there's just so many and it's a pain trying to find them again once I've been through them already desperate for something to actually do. I create some subfolders and example mail rules to sort his inbox. Client. Great. Fantastic. Really helpful. Again I see him forget everything I've just said and we continue reading his emails. One by one. Word by word. While I am being paid by the hour. Several solicited business offers, and emotional tear-stained exchanges later, eventually client has to leave for a meeting. He thanks me, I get paid. The staff member sees me out, laughing about how he's a funny old bird, isn't he? completely helpless by himself bless. Still shook I mutter some kind of playful agreement. We do a few of these sessions. It's the same each time. 
I Google Christmas gifts for his daughter and new girlfriend, fiddle and poke at things for him he'll never remember how to repeat. I'm really just a personal assistant on his overpowered overpriced shiny shiny fruit computer. While I'm being paid by the hour. Not long afterwards I get a full-time job again. And I'm no longer available for side jobs. So not worth it.